So I have three hours to make these 35 candy apples. So I'm going to show y'all how to make y'all candy apples. Um, if you have a last minute order and you need them done the same day. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell below to let you know every time I upload a video. All right, so let's get started. So I have my boiling water here and I also have a bowl of cold water. So I already took my stems off of my apples. So we're just gonna go through the cleaning process. So with the cleaning process, you just wanna dip your apples in the hot boiling water for eight to 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna put them all in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all I did was leave them in there for ten seconds. So now I'm just gonna take them out. I thought I was gonna be able to get them out with this. And I'm gonna set them straight down in that cold water. If I can get them out of here. And what that does is it stops the process. It has the, the heating process. Oh, it helps them cool off quicker. seven, eight, nine, ten. And since I have so many apples, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting these in the hot water. And then I'll be back with y'all once I have went through the cleaning process. And that's just putting them in the hot water and then putting them in the cold, cold water. And I'll be back with y'all as soon as I get done. I set them in the fridge in the bowl of cold water or either you can set them out just in the fridge on the rack it's up to you but the cooler I mean the faster they cool the quicker you'll be able to dip your apples okay so since I have so many apples I'm going to do two batches and have a mixture so I'm gonna do Start out with eight cups of sugar. One. Two. Eight. Okay, so eight cups is two batches. So I'm trying to think. Am I gonna add a half a batch in with the with the two batches? But looking, I'm just gonna go ahead just to make sure I have enough. So that's eight cups already. I'm gonna add two more cups. It's 10 cups of sugar and I rather have make sure I have enough than not enough. 
a third pop apple. So I want to make sure I don't have to remake, remake my mixture. Because when you have to do that, you have to make sure you match the colors up. The colors are the same. But this is a lot of mixture. And looking, I don't think I'm going to need that. I think the eight cups, well, I'm just going to go ahead with what I got. All right, so there's 10 cups of sugar. I'm going to add two and a half cups of water. One, two, For each four cups of sugar, you're gonna need one cup of water. All right, and then I'm gonna add two and a half cups of corn syrup. I know y'all usually used to me doing vinegar, but you know with vinegar, you don't get as much mixture. So, and I do, I use either one, vinegar or corn syrup. And since it's, when I'm doing it on the same day, I rather use corn syrup because to me, it's, it's better to do them, I mean, use the corn syrup when you're gonna do them the same day. All right. Oh, I didn't come prepared today, you guys. I'm getting, gotta get it. Hold on. It's been a while since I did the video. I just I know y'all wondering where I've been. I just had to take a break. All right, that's one cup. I'm gonna make sure you get it all out of there. cups and I don't like to take last minute orders because I like for my apples to sit out at least 24 to 48 hours all right so now we need a half a cup so there's 10 cups of sugar two cups of corn syrup so far and this is a half a cup, so in all, that's two cups, 10 cups of sugar, two and a half cups of corn syrup, and two and a half cups of water. All right now, that's the half a cup. You want to make sure you get it all of that out of there. And now you're just going to mix everything up very, very well. And I do not have my eye on. I don't turn my eye on until I have everything mixed up well. And I'm not going to touch it anymore. And I normally use a um, steel pot that I have just for candy apples, but it's not big enough to hold all this mixture. So I had to use this pot, but this is a pretty good pot. But I try to use only one pot for my candy apples and one pot for cleaning. Cause when you clean your apples, you're gonna get that white, that wax that comes off your apples. And it's very hard to get out your pots. So, it's best to only use one pot 
to clean your apples in one pot to make your apples that you're not going to be cooking with. All right, you guys. So what I'm going to do now is add my white mixture. I set them in the fridge in the bowl of cold water or either you can set them out just in the fridge on the rack it's up to you but the cooler I mean the faster they cool the quicker you'll be able to dip your apples okay so since I have so many apples I'm going to do two batches and have a mixture so I'm going to do Start out with eight cups of sugar. One. Two. Eight. Okay, so eight cups is two batches. So I'm trying to think of I'm gonna add a half a batch in with the with the two batches. But looking, I'm just gonna go ahead just to make sure I have enough. So that's eight cups already. I'm gonna add two more cups. Nine, ten. All right, that's ten cups of sugar, and I rather have make sure I have enough than not enough. And I have clarified apples, so I want to make sure I don't have to remake remake my mixture because when you have to do that, you have to make sure you match the colors up. The colors are the same. But this is a lot of mixture. And looking, I don't think I'm gonna need that. I think the eight cups, well, I'm just gonna go ahead with what I got. All right, so there's 10 cups of sugar. I'm gonna add two and a half cups of water. One. cups of sugar you're gonna need one cup of water all right and then i'm gonna add two and a half cups of corn syrup i know y'all usually used to me doing vinegar but you know with vinegar you don't get as much mixture so and i do i use either one vinegar or corn syrup and since it's when i'm doing it on the same day i rather use corn syrup because to me, it's, it's better to do them, I mean, use the corn syrup when you're going to do them the same day. All right. I need to come prepared today, you guys. I'm getting, I gotta get it. It's been a while since I did a video. I just I know y'all wondering where I've been. I just had to take a break. All right, that's one cup. I'm gonna make sure you get it all out of there.
two cups. And I don't like to take last minute orders because I like for my apples to sit out at least 24 to 48 hours. All right, so now we need a half a cup. So there's 10 cups of sugar, two cups of corn syrup so far. And this is a half a cup. So in all, it's two cups, 10 cups of sugar, two and a half cups of corn syrup, and two and a half cups of water. All right? Now, that's the half a cup. You want to make sure you get it all of that out of there. All right, and now you're just going to mix everything up very, very well. And I do not have my eye on. I don't turn my eye on until I have everything mixed up well. And I'm not going to touch it anymore. And I normally use a um, steel pot that I have just for candy apples. But it's not big enough to hold all this mixture. So I had to use this pot. But this is a pretty good pot. But I try to use only one pot for my candy apples and one pot for cleaning. Because when you clean your apples, you're going to get that white, that wax that comes off your apples. And it's very hard to get out your pots. So it's best to only use one pot to clean your apples and one pot to make your apples that you're not going to be cooking with. All right, you guys. So what I'm going to do now is add my white mixture. Okay, I know I said white mixture, and I meant my white cucumber. So, by there's so many apples, I'm gonna go ahead and color my mixture before and not at the end, but you can do up to you. To me, when you have a lot of apples, it saves time to go ahead and color your mixture at the beginning. But if you don't have that many apples, you can do it at the end, whichever you prefer. And these are going to be all red, so that is an easy color to get. This is a lot of mixture, you guys. Over a half a pot, and this is a big pot. But if you don't get the color you're achieving at the beginning, you can always um, add a little bit at the end, but you don't want to add too much. Because if you add too much, then the mixture will thicken up on you. Alright, so now that I added my white, I'm just going to go ahead and add my red, and I will be using the Wilton's brand of red, and this is a red red. And I use the Hobby Lobby brand of the white, and you have to make sure that you mix that Hobby Lobby brand of white in, because if not, it'll give you white specks in your when you're done dipping your apples you'll see little white dots so you have to make sure that you mix that in very very well that white all right so i'm just gonna show you guys how it looks now that the white i've mixed the white in so that is what we're looking like so far all right so now i'm gonna go ahead and add my red see that all right
also have to make sure you add mixed it red in or whatever color that you're using very well. And one thing about coloring your app, well, your mixture at the beginning, you kind of know what your color is going to be like. Alright, so I'm going to finish mixing this up well, and then I'll be back with you guys. You see, that's not the red that I'm looking for, so I'm going to add some more color to make it a little darker, a little more red. Still not as dark as I would want it, so I'm going to add some more red. This should do it. And if you want your color lighter, just add more white. As your mixture cooks and that color starts to get, it blends in better because the heat melts it, your color will get a little darker. Not much, but just a little. And that's the color I have so far. not as dark as I want it. mixture so it may take a lot of color but try not to put too much I'm not going to add any more. Um, this is the color. And if I feel like that it's not as red as I want it, then at the end I can add a little bit. But I don't want to add too much. Because like I said, that will darken up a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to take my pot, where I'm just going to bring some hot water, a bowl of hot water. And I'm just going to go around my pots to make sure I have no sugar lingering around my pot, because that's going to keep your 
mixture from crystallizer. You're just gonna go around the edges of your pot and make sure there's no sugar around your pot. And some people come in and say, well, why don't I use a brush? I've tried it and I don't like it. I prefer this way, but if you prefer to use a brush, then you can use a brush. And you have to be careful because with that much mixture, mixture, I can't talk today. Um, you don't want it to overflow. That's what happened to me the other day. So just put a wooden wooden spoon at the top of your pot and let it keep your mixture from overflowing. All right, so now I'm gonna let y'all see what my color came out. That's my color, you guys. So it came out a pretty good red. But if I feel like that's not dark enough, I'll add a little bit more at the end. But I'm going to not add any more because I don't want to add too much. I don't, don't want my mixture to get too thick by adding too much color. So that's it. So we're going to let this cook to 300 degrees. And I'm going to put my thermometer in. You always buy thermometers. They like, I don't, I don't know. They, they need to make a better thermometer because I've tried different kinds and... All of them break. All right, so that's one. Make sure it doesn't touch the bottom of your pot or you will get an inaccurate reading. All right, so I'm about to add one more just to make sure. All right, so that's two. Now, to be on the safe side. I would add this one, but this one, I think those work better because last time I had all three in there and this one is a good thermometer when it's new. So I have to buy me another one because you don't have to worry about, you know, sticking it on the side of the pot. You just sit it down in the pot, but I'm going to go off with these two. And when we, we, we mm, Lord Jesus, when we reach 300 degrees, I will be back with you guys and we're going to add our flavoring and then we're going to dip our apples. Okay, I have All my right. silicone mats here ready. And this is two. I have one more. I'm going to think I'm going to have to pull it out because that's gonna not going to be enough for 35 apples. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get my other mat out and we're going to get ready and get prepared for when our mixture get done. Okay, so we have reached almost 300 degrees i think you can tell once you start cooking candy apples you can start to do it without the thermometer you can tell by the mixture when you take your thermometer out if you see that it's look how that candy is sticking on there then it's ready and if you put it run cold water up under it and it gets hard as soon as the cold water hits it's ready okay so you can see my thermometer is not working that well. Let's see. It cooled down after I took it out. But I may I mean I can tell when my mixture is ready. See once I put that on the cold water, it's it's gonna get hard. You see how that sticks to the thermometer okay, we're gonna start to dip it. I'm trying to wait till my bowl is about to dip. I keep my eye because I'm doing so many candy apples. Um and I have to excuse my eye. Like I just did candy mixture on it. We had a couple days ago, but yeah, so I'm gonna take it off the eye, but I keep my eye on low as very low as my eye can go in case my mixture starts to thicken. I can just sit it back on there, but you want to make sure that it's low because you don't want to burn your mixture. So now I'm just going to stir everything up really well. I did put one gram of Lorraine's flavoring in, and I'm going to do a half or more gram. You can use one gram per batch, and I have two batches and a half. So I used one and a half 
Lorenz is so strong. And see, y'all can't see, but this mixture is ready. Even though the thermometer said it's not, this mixture is ready. And once you start stirring it, you'll feel the thickness of it, but you wanna make sure it's ready before you stir it. All right, so now, just gonna let my bubbles die down before I start to dip. See, look how all that stuck to the spoon. It's ready. That thermometer is wrong, but if I wouldn't knew, and then you can start to smell your mixture too when it gets about ready. But if I was new to it and tried to just go off the thermometer, it ain't break very easily. And also, when you're doing candy apples the same day, you want to make sure that you have some pat, I mean, some candy sugar, the same color as your apples, just in case you get a couple apples that have bubbles. I'm not saying that you will, but just in case you do, have some candy sugar on hand, the same color as your apples. That way, if your apples get sticky, you can always put that, you can always cover it in the candy sugar and be able to bag your apples. Because once they get sticky, and the humidity is what makes them sticky. I have a lot of questions about the candy apples getting sticky. It's the humidity. If your house is very, has a lot of humidity, is they're going to get sticky. In any kind of heat, I always tell my customers, if you put them, if they're going to be out in the heat or in the sun, that the candy is going to get sticky. I mean, it's, it's no way to avoid that. But with the candy sugar you um you can always use that you know if your apples starts to get sticky and you need to bag them and they're too sticky to bag just boil you some water and roll your apple across that steam of the top of the water don't let the apple hit the water just the steam and then cover it in your candy sugar and i also have a video on how to do that and even if you know you get a bubble you can pop it you know this is very hot so you have to be careful but sometimes you can pop it if you see it in time But um, I'm doing these apples within, what, maybe three hours? So I started about 9 a.m. It's about 12 now. I go bubble. Had no time to pop it. No one came up. Popped it. So, you know. apples just go even though I don't have any bubbles or anything I probably will just cover some of them in a the powdered sugar and when you're doing your apples the same day you you're gonna get some sap that comes out so you're gonna have to clean your apples I wipe these apples um, more than once as soon as they came out of the cold water and I put my sticks and my straws on, I began to wipe them again. And I also like to try to wipe them again before I dip them because when that sap comes out, you, it will cause you to get bubbles if they're not very clean when you dip them. Like, as you can see there, you see those little white? That's the sap coming out the apple because you didn't. I didn't let them sit 48 hours. That sap is gonna come out. So what you do is just take your paper towel and just wipe it down. Put this back on the eye and just wipe it down before you dip them.
my mixture hadn't started. It was just a little bit. I just like to keep it on the iron low, but you have to make sure it's on low because your, your mixture will, it will um, burn quick. So that's why I say keep it on low. But if low is not working to thin your mixture out when it started thickening up, then it's turning up a little bit. And then once you, you know, get the hang of doing it, you will know what to turn your eye on to keep it on just to keep your mixture from not burning, but thinning out, keeping it thin. And as you can see, these apples are bubble free. And I did these in about three hours. So right now I have my eye on two. I had it on very, very low, but it wasn't happening. So I turned it up a little bit or two. And so far, so good. I haven't had one bubble yet. Some people might like their apples like that done the same day because they feel like the apples are fresher, but it's the same. So I did, I turned my eye on five, and once I seen it started to cook a little bit, I turned it all the way back down on two. And a little 
look like we're gonna have enough mixture. I hope so. I have two, four, six, eight, nine apples left. Well, once your apples cool about five minutes, you can go ahead and bag them or box them or however you're gonna do them. I'm gonna bag these since there's so many. And I always give my customers a choice for box or bag. Boxes are a little bit more than bags. right there a little bubble and you want to make sure before you dip the top of your apples and the bottom of your apples are very dry See, my mixture has started thickening. And it gets hard to build once your mix starts to thick, thicken up. So I just turned it back on six because I had it on low and you can see my mixture still thicken. one. 